I am Mozart II, the lost genius of Maria Anna Mozart. Papa always had a violin tucked under his chin. When his friends came to our home in Salzburg, they made music for the angels. I knew I had to make music too. Please, Papa, teach me to play the harpsichord. I climbed onto the wooden bench. Papa placed each of my fingers on a smooth ivory key. Using one finger at a time, I pressed down hard. Each key sang back to me in its own special voice. I practiced for hours each day. In no time, music poured out of me like water over the river branks in springtime. Confident, wild, carefree. Wolfgang also wanted to do everything I did, so Papa taught him too. Within a few months, we were playing side by side, faster and faster, memorizing more and more difficult pieces. By the time I was 10, Papa bragged that I was the best child musician in Europe. He arranged for me to play in the concert halls of Munich, Linz, and Paris. Wolfie came along to play the easier pieces. At first, my hand shook. What if I made a mistake? But each time we performed, applause filled the room. By the time we reached Paris, my fears had disappeared. We stopped in Vienna to perform for the Empress Maria Theresa. Wolfie and I played blindfolded. The audience begged for more. So much fuss over a silly trick that wasn't the least bit hard to do. The Empress was kinder than she looked. She sent us fancy clothes and filled Papa's pouch with gold coins. Back in Salzburg, Papa gave us new pieces to play, more difficult and exciting than anything we had seen before. I could hear the music before my fingers touched the keys. These notes needed me, and I needed them. Together, we would bring their magic into the world. Wolfie and I practiced all day. Two bodies, four hands, one perfect purpose. Months later, we packed our valises again. This time, we made a grand tour, playing in cities from Munich to London to Lyon. During the long, bumpy carriage rides from town to town, Wolfie and I invented a magical kingdom. It had a secret language and no grown-ups. I also did something else that was just a little bit naughty. When we were not practicing or performing, I wrote music. At a concert in London, Wolfie played one of my sonatas. I curtsied shyly as the audience applauded. Wolfie beamed with pride. But off to the side, Papa fumed. Girls were not allowed to compose. He ordered me to never write music again. That night, I prayed for God to make me a boy. Soon, after we returned home, Papa planned our next tour. But something was different. When I practiced, he didn't compliment the lift of my wrists or fuss over the crescendos of my sonatas. You and Mama will stay here. You are 18. Soon, you will marry. Mary? Music was my only love. Please, Papa, let me come with you. I played the most difficult pieces for him. Perfect. Every one. Wolfie watched, helpless against Papa's power and fearful of his anger. We both knew Papa's decision was final. The day Papa and Wolfie set out for Italy, there was no music in my heart. They were away for months or years at a time. While they were gone, I wrote sonatas and concertos. I couldn't help it. The music in my head begged to be free. Wolfie and I sent each other our compositions. He said my work was brilliant. So was his. Years later, Wolfie invited Papa and me to Munich to hear his new opera, Idomino. But that was not the best part. After Munich, we would perform together in Augsburg. It had been years since Papa had allowed me to play in public. Wolfie and I sat close, our arms weaving over and under each other in an elaborate dance across the keyboard. My heart soared. After the performance, Wolfie pulled me aside. Come with me to Vienna, he pleaded. 
We could give concerts together again. Girls are writing music now. You could too. But it was not to be. A daughter could not disobey her father. Once we returned home, Wolfie's letters came less frequently. Without word from my dear brother, it became harder for me to write music. My heart felt cold and empty. Papa arranged for me to marry a man from St. Gilgan who had no love for music. Without music, my heart had no home. On the day I received word that Wolfie had died, it was as if the blood in my own veins stopped flowing. He was my best friend. Through music, we shared one heart. I ran my fingers over the compositions he had sent me years ago. Could the genius who had written those melodies really be gone? I returned to Salzburg after my husband died. It seemed ages since I had last played the harpsichord. But once I laid my fingers on the keys, music poured through my hands. My heart had not forgotten its first true love. I was, after all, a Mozart. <laughs>